Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a folding map effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by cgshortcuts.com, the ultimate online resource for learning CG and motion graphics, where you can find all of our tutorials, in-depth courses, resources, and loads of downloadable project files and CG assets. You can now also become a CG insider and get unlimited access to exclusive members only content. Plus you'll be supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials just like this one. So head over to cgshortcuts.com and start learning today. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. So there's a few paper folding tutorials on YouTube. EJ over at iDesign did a great one a few years back and I'll leave a link down below to where you can check that out. But we're going to take the concept a bit further in this video. So let's start by bringing in a plane that we can use as our map or a piece of paper. And we'll make this shape a bit more rectangular. Let's leave the width at 400 and reduce the height to 300. And it's important to figure out how exactly we're going to fold this before we start adding any joints or weighting and all of that stuff. So let's hit N and B on the keyboard to show the polygons of our plane here. And you can see there's loads of lines on here by default, but ideally we only want a line on every fold only. And I know I want to fold this once along the short edge and four times along the long edge. So if we give our width four segments and our height two segments, we can now see exactly where those folds need to go. So if we're happy with this, we need to lock it off by converting our plane to geometry. So with it selected, we can hit C on the keyboard to make it editable. And now we can start rigging this. So the first thing we need to do is set up our folding joints. So let's head over to the character menu and grab the joint tool. And we need our joints to snap to the points on our mesh. So probably best to switch over to point mode. And so we can snap to each point, we'll also need to activate snapping. So here we want the vertex snap. And now we can lay our first joint down in the center of our plane. And we need to hold control when we click on the points to insert a joint. And we want this joint to point up this way. So let's hold control and place the end of that joint on this top point. And this joint is going to allow us to bend the top half over on this fold line. But we also want this joint hierarchy to affect both sides of the long edge as well. So let's hold down control again and lay two more points out from here. Then we'll need to do the same thing on the other side here, but we need to make sure we place the next set of joints correctly in the hierarchy. We don't want them to be a child of joint four, but of joint one instead, which is the main joint we made. So we'll select that and grab our joint tool again. And we also need to make sure that we disable root null in the tool settings here, so it doesn't create another null at the root of the hierarchy. And now we can hold control and insert another joint from here. And we'll make two of these like we did on the other side, like so. And that is our main joint structure we'll be using. So if we switch back to model mode and grab our rotation tool, if we select the main root joint here, rotating that will also rotate the other joints because they're children of this main joint. So they'll follow along with that, but we'll also be able to bend them independently like so. So now we need to copy this setup to the lower half of our plane. And the quickest way to do that is to just hold control and drag out a copy of this hierarchy. And we can even rename that to joint two so we don't get confused. Then we can rotate this around 180 degrees and that will control the folding of this side. So now we need to bind our mesh to the joints. So bending them will actually affect our geometry. So let's take our root knoll out of the plane hierarchy and we'll need to select all of the joints. So let's right click on the root knoll and choose select children. And we only want the joints themselves to be selected. So we can hold control and deselect the null. And now we need to select what we want the joints to be bound to. In our case, that's going to be the plane. So holding control, we'll grab that as well. Then we'll go back to our character menu and we want to bind them, but let's take a look at these settings here first. For this particular rig, we wanna make sure that we don't have any smoothing enabled. So we'll set these to zero. And smoothing's great for normal character rigs, but not so great for the rigid kind of rigging we need for folding paper. All right, let's okay that. And now if we grab one of these joints and rotate them, they're now influencing that mesh, but not quite the way we want them to. 
So to fix this, we need to manually paint the weights so we can control which points are being affected by which joints. So we'll head over to the character menu again, and this time we need the weight tool. And everything turns red, which is indicating which points are bound to the hierarchy we've got selected here. So this joint hierarchy is influencing all the points that are marked red. And we'll need to repaint this so we're only affecting the bottom half. So let's paint some weights onto this point here. Then we need the next joint in our hierarchy, which is this one here. We need that to affect this point, so we'll paint that in. Then onto the next joint, that needs to affect the point on the end here. Then we'll do the same thing on the other branch of our hierarchy. This joint affects this point, then the next one, this corner point. So that's it for this side. Let's grab the joints on the top of our plane. And that goes black, indicating that we don't have any weight set up. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side as well. Only this time, when we go on to the second joint, we need to paint in this point, but also this one here on the inside. Otherwise, we'll be left with some points that don't have any influence. And we need to do the same with the next one as well. So we'll add weight here and here as well. And you'll see why in just a second. Let's do the same on the other side. So here and here. And finally, this point and this point. Now we'll grab our rotation tool and this joint. And if we rotate this, you can see that's bending exactly the way we want. And we'll check these joints on the edge here. That's looking good. And these are also affecting the middle points as well. And if we grab this joint as well, we're now affecting the whole right side of our plane. So now that that's all rigged up, let's animate this. And you could just hand animate all of these joints and keyframe them individually, but that can get a bit messy. So the best option is probably going to be utilizing the pose morphs instead. So if we right click on our root null, let's go to rigging tags and apply a pose morph tag. Then in there, we want to enable hierarchy so we can record that in our poses. And we also want to record rotation as that's what we'll be animating. Then we can set our poses. So first we'll delete our default pose out of here, which leaves us with our base pose, which in our case is the plane all flattened out like this. And so this makes a bit more sense. Let's rename this to unfolded because it's our unfolded state. Then we'll click add pose. And this is going to be our first fold. So we'll name it fold one. And our first fold is going to be folding this part and this part inward. So we'll grab both of those joints and rotate them inward. And we want this to be just shy of 90 degrees so it doesn't intersect with itself. So about 179 degrees should work fine. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, about 179 degrees. Okay, that's our first fold done. So we'll go back to the pose morph tag. And if we take a look at the animate tab, we can now control fold one with this slider. So we can easily and cleanly keyframe all of these joints together like so. But we'll finish all of our folds before we do any keyframing. So let's hop back to edit mode and we'll add another pose. And you can probably guess what we're going to name this one. This will be fold two. And you might've noticed that we've reset back to the base pose over here. And that's just what we get in edit mode. But if we switch back to animate again, there's our first fold again. So fold two is going to be folding this joint over this way. So we'll go back to edit mode and we'll grab that joint and rotate it over this way. And again, not quite all the way to 180 degrees. Then back in our pose morph tag, we can switch back to animate mode and we've now got a second slider we can use to unfold this paper. Okay, let's put that back and go on to our final fold which is going to be folding this side over to here. So back to edit, let's add our final pose, which will be fold three. And we'll be bending this joint and this joint this time. So let's grab both of those and fold them over this way. Again, almost to 180 degrees. Then back here over in animate, we now have our map all folded up nicely. However, we might run into a bit of a problem here if we try to animate fold three, it doesn't quite behave how we'd expect. And that's because we're folding joints that have already been folded. So the rotations are going the wrong way. And that might make a bit more sense if we go back to edit mode 
and just reset that last fold and zero out the angle down here so it's flat again. Back in fold two, we bent this joint over. So these two joints end up in the same place, but their rotations are going in different directions. So when posing fold three, all we need to do is make one joint bend one direction and the other joint in the opposite direction. So let's grab this one and bend it this way. And just so we can match these up perfectly, let's manually type in 177 degrees in here and apply that. Then we'll rotate this one in the opposite direction. And to be super precise, let's just type in negative 177 degrees here and hit apply. And it looks a bit funny with these intersections here while we're in edit mode. But if we go back here and switch to animate again, hopefully fold three should work correctly now. And I think that should be good. So now we can keyframe the unfolding animation. So we'll start with fold three here but I actually want it to unfold from the front of the map rather than back behind it like this. So we can actually keyframe this from negative 100 instead, which will allow us to swing around from the front like that. Okay, so back to negative 100. Let's set our first keyframe. Then we'll go ahead to frame 12 and unfold this fully back to 0% and keyframe that. Then we'll move on to fold two. And for its first keyframe, I actually want a slight overlap of about two frames before fold three finishes. So the animation will look a bit more organic. So let's keyframe that there. Then we'll go ahead to frame 22 and fully unfold that and keyframe again. Then for fold one, we'll overlap two frames again and set another keyframe. And we'll finish our unfolding on frame 32 and keyframe that fully unfolded. So now if we play that back, we've now got our basic unfolding all sorted out. But it does look a bit robotic at the moment. So let's rewind and we'll grab all of our animated fields here and right click and we want to show the F curves. And you can see our animation is linear at the moment. So let's hit control A to select all of the keyframes and we'll click here to give them some easing. And if we drag these out, we can exaggerate those curves and this should give us some nice smooth animation. So let's close this and check it out. And I think that looks better, but we can take this one step further and make it look a little bit more organic. Let's first hide those joints. We don't need to see those anymore. Then with our plane selected, let's head over to our deformers and add a jiggle deformer into the mix. And if we hold shift when we click on that, it'll come in as a child of our plane and start affecting it straight away but we also wanna make sure it's affecting it in the right order. So after our binding, so let's switch these around. And our Jiggle Deformer is going to add some organic overshoot to our animation. So let's see what that looks like. Very cool. So adding a bit of Jiggle definitely makes it look a bit more interesting, I think. So to finish this off, I'll quickly make up a couple of materials and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've quickly made up a couple of materials here. We've got a plain white material for the back part of our map. So let's apply that. And I've also got another material here with an image of a map that we can apply to the front of our plane. And because the map material was applied last, it's actually been applied to both sides of our plane. So to restrict that to only the front of the plane, we need to grab that material. And down here under side, let's just switch this from both to front. So now we've got it on the front here, but we can see that plain white material on the back. All right, now before we render this off, we may run into a little bit of a problem. If we rewind this, you can see that we're getting some intersecting happening here when our map is folded up. But thankfully, there's a sneaky way to fix this, but we'll need to bake our animation to keyframes first. So let's grab our plane and hit Alt G to group that into a null. And let's just rename this to map. Then we'll right click on the null and we also want to show the F curves on that. And obviously we don't have any keyframes on the null itself, but this is actually where we can bake our animation. First, we need to make sure our null is visible in here. So let's go to view, show and turn off show animated. So it'll show our selected object as well. And there's our map null. And with this selected, we can go up to functions and choose bake objects. And these are the exact settings we need in this case, especially with all parameters enabled down here. And this is going to allow us to bake the points of the geometry itself. 
And you also wanna make sure that this is baking the full length of your timeline, then we can hit okay. So now if we close this, that's created a baked copy of our map. So we don't need any of this stuff anymore. So let's delete those. So we're just left with the copy. And because all of the animation, including the skinning and jiggle deformer is now baked directly into the geometry, we can also remove those. And now if we hit play, we have the exact same animation baked solely into the geometry. And you'll see if we click on the plane, there's all of our keyframes baked onto every frame of our timeline. And this is going to allow us to manually fix any intersecting. So if we grab our polygon tool and rewind this, we've definitely got some intersecting going on here in our first frame. And if we play that through again, there's quite a bit of intersecting as it unfolds. So the best way to fix this that I could find, and feel free to correct me if you know a better way, is to grab the polygon, which when folded is the front of the map, and go back to the start, we can manually tweak this so that it doesn't intersect by switching on the point level animation, which can record changes to the mesh itself and the auto keying, which will automatically set a keyframe when we change anything. So then it's just a matter of tweaking this on every frame where there's intersecting. So we'll just move this up ever so slightly until it's no longer intersecting about there. Then next frame, same thing. And remember any changes we make are automatically being recorded. So we just need to do all the frames where there's intersecting. So this one and the next one. And I'll quickly do a few more frames, but I think you're getting the gist of it. Then once you've manually tweaked all of the problem frames, and yeah, we might just switch back to model mode. Now, if we step through this, all of the intersecting on those frames has been fixed. So you just need to go through each frame and tweak things as necessary. So it can be a bit of a slow manual process, but it seems to be about the best way to fix this problem without overcomplicating things too much. And that is pretty much how I go about folding and unfolding a plane in Cinema 4D. So that's it for this tutorial. If you make something cool with this technique, don't forget to post it up on our Facebook group. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.